What's up guys, this is Kazi. In this video, we're gonna be looking at one of the biggest issues that we had with the previous version of Asus and how to fix it with this current version. It still takes some jiggery pokery. That's what we're gonna be discussing in this video. And for those that don't even know what Asus is, it's short for Academy Color Encoding System. Basically, the Academy came up with a standardized system where the entire pipeline, when it comes to pre-production, production, and post-production, it all stays consistent. Because think about this, right? Like if you watch something on your laptop compared to your phone or your TV, the same exact content will look completely different, right? Now imagine the same thing happening at that scale when you're trying to create content. Think about something like Game of Thrones that is so involved when it comes to CGI and everything. It all has to come together perfectly for it to be believable and look realistic, right? So if the visual effects department is seeing completely different colors than what the finishing department is seeing when everything is put together, it doesn't look believable and the whole thing falls apart. So that's where ACES comes into play. And by no means this color science is new, but it is spreading like wildfire right now. So if you look at the list of movies and big projects that are being done in ACES is out of control. Disney is pretty much completely on ACES, which means Marvel and 100 other companies that are inside Disney. Netflix is going in that direction rapidly. So just check out some of these notable mentions. Black Panther, done in Asus. Spider-Man, No Way Home, you guessed it, Asus. Squid Game, all done in Asus. Dark, one of my personal favorite TV show of all time was done in Asus. And I've done a video on how to create the dark look. If you're interested, link is right here. It's my most watched video on this channel. So it'll be fun. Like finish this video first, then go check that out. So we recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. So the link to the training is in the description below. Definitely check it out. And guys, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload brand new content. And make sure you're following me on Instagram for tons of behind the scenes and other cool stuff. And on that note, Let's roll the intro. All right, so we're inside Resolve right now. We have three different shots, two from Ari Alexa, one from DJI uh, Phantom 4. Okay, so usually what you want to do if you want to work in ACES, the typical process is project-wide uh, color management. So when you go under your project settings by clicking on this guy right here. Um, I go under color management and here we're only going to concern with this section right here. Okay, so color science is set to DaVinci YRGB by default and timeline color space is usually set to Rec. 709 scene. So what I'm going to do is change the color science to ASUS CCT, which is my working color space. And I'm going to leave the input transform to default. So then that way I can set my own, uh, pick my own cameras and just make sure that the transformation is correct. The output transform is going to be Rec. 709. Basically, we're saying that, hey, we want to see this on Rec. 709 um, color space, and that's our display out. Okay, I'm going to click on use color space aware grading tools. This is going to be perfect for my color warper and HDR palette operations. So this is it. That's all I got to do here. I'm going to hit save and uh, this happens. So this is happening because we haven't uh, fed it the right information. So this looks all out of whack, weird on my scopes. So let's go fix it, okay? And uh, like I said, these two clips are from Ari Alexa. So you have to do some legwork and figure out which cameras you're working with. So I'm gonna click on these two, I'm gonna right click and under my ASUS input transform, I'm gonna go select Ari and log C3. As soon as I do that, it's a proper conversion, but there you go. This is what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the dreaded ASUS problem. And now look at all of this, like what's happening here. 
And you can even see the colors going nuclear here. Um, and the problem with this is, look at all of this, okay? And the problem with that is now that uh, because we have a color science, color space, and color management applied on a project level, we can't necessarily go behind the color management and fix this gunky green or blue, I meant. Uh, so what can we do here? Um, what we can do one thing is I can go under my hue versus saturation and then I can go grab my blue and start pulling it down. And uh, I'm just looking at, am I fixing it? I'm not really fixing it because what is this? This is Ari Alexa. It should not be looking like this. It looks like crap. And this would have never happened if I was working in a regular color space. And let me just quickly prove that point. So let's reset this and uh, let's not get confused. I'm going to go back to, let's just say we do a resolve color management. Um, or I just said this to DaVinci uh, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 for timeline color space. And I leave the color science to DaVinci YRGB. And now if I come out here, it looks like this. It's totally fine. I'm just trying to prove a point here, okay? And now if I drop a color space transform and I give it a proper information. So color space is RE Gamma 3. And we got... C3 here, and it's doing a proper Rec. 79 conversion. Boom. Look at this. Perfect. No artifacting whatsoever. Look at how beautiful and creamy the scopes are. Nothing is clipping. Everything is there. Proper conversion. Super, super kosher. Okay? So that was just to kind of give you an example what ASUS was doing. All right? And you should be aware of that. If you're working in ASUS and you're... Uh, certain colors, neon colors are going nuclear. Just know that that's not normal. So now we're going to go back to what we had going on. We're going to turn that on again. And uh, we're just going to hit save. This is what's going on. Like, look at this. So this is a real issue, okay? And now if I go to this clip, look what's going on. Look at my scopes. What's happening to my magentas? They're gone. This is all clipped. Once again, we can go under hue versus hue. I'm going to take my magenta and I'm going to pull it in. But we're not really protecting any colors because look at this, like how you see this harsh white line. That just means that we're clipping. And you can even see it here, how we're suppressing a certain hue and saturation of that hue so hard that we're creating this artifacting. You see all of this? No good. This is absolutely awful. That's not what we want, okay? Especially when you're talking about working with the best camera known to mankind. We should not be compromising. We should be getting the same image that we see from Blade Runner, okay? So that's what should be happening. Obviously, the lighting matters and the cinematographer and all that stuff, but you know what I'm talking about. So now, uh, another huge issue with Asus is this. Asus is sort of like a elitist format. So what am I talking about? Like you actually have to wear big boy pants to be um, accepted by Asus, okay? And right now they're not accepting DJI, they're not accepting GoPro. So if I click right here and I go under Asus, look at this. These are the only color profiles that I have available from these camera manufacturers. So I don't have DJI and I don't have GoPro. So what do I do in this case? Like... This is a huge issue, and this is another reason why I would highly recommend you checking out my free training because I'm going to take you through a thorough process to nailing this accurately. But here, I'm just going to give you a quick little thing that you can do. So you can right-click here, um, go in here, and kind of start experimenting with different profiles and see which one kind of looks okay. All right? So that's what you can do right now. Uh, we can go here. And uh, I can select maybe black magic is not terrible, but the black points are really, really off. So it's sort of like log. So this is just not going to work. What about this one? It's a little bit better. Okay. So maybe I can live with that. I can work off of that. But it still doesn't change the fact. Look at the reds, how they're clipping. See, it's just flattened out right there. And the blue is doing the same exact thing. So this is no good. So guys, the project base color management, especially when working with ACES, 
is just a no-go, okay? Um, especially back in the day before ASUS fixed this huge problem. So what I'm going to do is we're going to come out of the ASUS um, CCT and now we're going to work in a no tree based color management. So I'm going to go back to DaVinci YRGB and now we're going to look at the same example, but here. So timeline color space, I'm going to select ASUS CCT. That's only for the color grading aware tools. So HDR palette and color warper are going to perform better in this timeline. So I'm going to select that and uh, I'm going to come out of it. And uh, we go back to this. And now if I right click, I'm not going to get the ASUS input transform option, okay? Because we're out of it. So now everything is in manual. We're going to have to feed uh, proper information to get the results that we're looking for. So now I'm going to recreate the scenario before Resolve and ASUS fix this problem. So what would happen before is if you want to convert this image uh, on a node base level, uh, you will go apply an ASUS transform, okay? And here you will tell it what it is. But before we didn't have ASUS 1.3 version. Okay. So that was the biggest issue. So we were on 1.2, not 1.3. You see this extra option that opens up? Wait till we get there and that's going to be magic. So before we had ASUS 1.2, and I feel like if you're in Resolve 16, you might still be using ASUS 1.2. I think the 1.3 is available uh, with either Resolve 17 or 18. Uh, somebody can comment below and let me know if they have uh, this available in Resolve 17. Anyways, in here, what you would do is we will select uh, log C3, right? So this is our color space for input transform. And then our output transform, we're going to have to select Rec 709. As soon as we do that, boom, we're done. It's perfect. But perfect in a sense of like we got proper conversion, but we still have that issue. So how do we fix it? Well, the beautiful thing now is in a node base level is that I can hit shift S, create a node prior to this, and then go fix the issues that were created after applying the conversion. So I can go in here, same process, hue versus saturation. And now I can go, hey, pull back on the blue a little bit, pull back on the magenta a little bit. But guys, I'm telling you, even now, like, yes, we're cleaning it up. It's way, way, way better. Remember, like we're, we weren't getting this result before on a project based level, uh, but now we're getting this cleaned up, but not all the way. And plus, like we're changing the inherent quality and the the look DNA of this image. All right. We don't necessarily want to pull out the saturation. We just want to fix this artifacting. So that's what we really want to do. So how can we do that? And obviously, same thing is going to be happening here. I'm going to middle click to copy the grade. And here, what we can do is reset this instead of subtracting blue, uh, which we also need to. So I can go in here and go under my blue and start pulling it back and kind of just keep it here. And now go to my magenta and start pulling it back. And I'm looking at my scope and I'm kind of pulling it in. And uh, the results are a lot cleaner. Remember how much noise we had here um, on a project level? We're not getting that at all. So it is a lot cleaner, still suppressed. I want to work with the best image possible. OK, so how do we do that? This is how we do it. I'm pretty much going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my ASUS transform, apply it to this clip. But now I'm going to select ASUS 1.3, which is a brand new format that was available in Resolve 18, as I mentioned, could be 17 and again, if you guys know, correct me in the comments below. Um, input transform, we're going to select RE Alexa, so log C3. And for the output, we're going to select um, Rec 709. And uh, nothing changed. So what's up with that? 1.2, 1.1, 1.3, same results. So Kazi, like, what are you talking about? Like, this is this is exactly the same. Well, this is where everything changes, okay? We got two options when you click on this drop down. You got the reference gamut compress, which is sort of like an uh, semi auto sort of feature. And that does take care of a lot of the issues. Like, look at that, right? So, like, this is before, this is after, it kind of takes care of that. But the best feature is right here parametric gamut compress. And as soon as I hit that, all right. So now you'll say, well, these both did the same exact thing. Well, now we have all these manual controls. OK, so what I can do is I can take my magenta limit and then start increasing it 
and you can see down here how it gets kind of smooth, right? And now I can take my magenta threshold and start pulling it in. And then all of a sudden, like, look how we're cleaning it up. And another thing that I can do is I can take my roll off and like, look at this. I can either expand it and get more colors out of my image and like really take advantage of ACES color space, or I can just kind of be conservative and pull it back a little bit. So this is what you would do in the new iteration of Resolve uh, and ACES 1.3, and the power is out of control. So like now let's go in and look at this. Already the problem is solved. So if I were to go here, look at this, all right? And it's going to be the same results with 1.2. We go to 1.3. We go kick in and freaking the super mode. Everything is fixed. And I can even do this and um, click on that and kind of see like what else do I have to do? Do I have to mess with my cyan limit if I move it up and down? Like what's really going on? Um, and guys, ultimately, I will just encourage you guys to play with these. Okay, this is the best way to kind of find what where you want to end up and to get the cleanest image, don't ever be afraid of just like going like this. Like I, I mean it, like just nothing is going to break. Okay. All that's going to happen is that you're going to find what works and where you're supposed to be. Like, look at what I'm doing this, like what's really going on. Like I'm just, I'm putting everything exactly where I want to put it. I'm not really cracking my image. I'm not doing anything. If anything, by doing this, I'm getting the most control and really understanding what all these parameters really do. And like, look at what we just did compared to the results that we would get if we were to just do none. Like, look at look at all this weird, like 8-bit Super Nintendo crap that's happening here compared to this right here, how clean this is. So this is a massive change that came with Asus 1.3, and especially when you turn on this advanced feature and use it how I showed you so hopefully this was helpful. So after watching this video, you probably are seeing like how when it comes to color grading, there's so many ways to get to your destination, but there are efficient ways with more accurate results, the right way, quote unquote. Um, if you want me to help you basically take out a lot of trial and error and get there faster, then I highly encourage you to check out the free training on top of that. It comes with tons of goodies, uh, downloadable content that you get from me. So link is going to be in the description. Check it out. I also want to know, have you graded anything in ASUS? What is your experience like? Let me know in the comment section below. Please smash the like button if you enjoyed this video so we can reach more people such as yourself. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next video. Love you all.